Hey guys, today on the podcast, we got Jacob Templeton. Jacob has been a Paralympian in 2016 and has just been recently picked to go to the Para Commonwealth Games this year. I hope you guys enjoy the podcast with Jacob and I hope you guys like and subscribe. Welcome to the podcast. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. Anytime. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Say that again. Sorry, buddy. What did you want to be when you were growing up? What did I want to be? Sorry, got bad hearing. Um, <laughs> I wanted to be, funny, if you ask my parents, they would have told you that I wanted to be a seagull because I wanted to fly around everywhere and be on top of the world. <laughs> uh, but probably for me from a young age, I wanted to be good at sport. Can't tell you exactly what. I liked basketball and I liked AFL. Yeah. Um, being from Tasmania, but I also like swimming. So I didn't know what at a young age, maybe through primary school, but something sporty, I would say. Yeah, nice. How would your oldest friend describe you? Oh, my oldest friend. I would say probably um, a bit of a worry what, I would say. Probably someone that maybe gets a little bit um, sort of uptight about my training and competition sometimes. For me, I suppose that's just... Uh, trying to be very strict on myself so I can get the best results out of myself. <laughs> yeah, nice. What are you most proud of in your life or career so far? I'll go with career. Uh, I suppose I'm here today being an athlete, so I'm probably most proud of, uh, or definitely most proud of being a Paralympian. Uh, so I competed at 2016 in the Rio Games and I qualified for Tokyo last year, although unfortunately I wasn't chosen, so that was a bit of heartache. Um but, yeah, that, that would be it for now. Being a Paralympian is something I'm very proud of. Yeah, nice. How do you handle hard times, like getting injured or what you just touched on, not getting picked in, something when you get picked in? Yeah, it's very hard um, because as an athlete, I suppose, um, it's a bit different now. I do a lot of work now. I'm working as well as my training. But probably back then I was, um, you know, I missed a couple of teams very narrowly when I was solely being an athlete. Like that was, you know, everything that my life kind of revolved around. So, when, when you are an athlete and sometimes you identify yourself as a bit of like that, that's all you are, uh, which can be a bit of a trap for many athletes. It can be very hard. But now I, you know, I like to call myself Jake the person first before Jake the swimmer because there's many other things in life than just being an athlete. Yeah, nice. What was the experience like going to the Olympics in Rio? Crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. It's um, a couple of the older guys, I call them old because they're older than me, um, but they were veterans and they, at the time, they were veterans of the Paralympic team. So they, they said before that it's kind of like a big theme park, you know, like going to Dream World, but for athletes. Because when you get there, the village is where obviously all the athletes and staff and officials and yeah. stuff stay. And you, know, you got the games room and you got the, uh, the dining hall, which is something I can't even describe. And you've got all the sort of big sky rises and tennis courts and swimming pools and stuff all in the village. And then Obviously, you're there to compete, though, so you've got to keep yourself in check and make sure you don't go and do some stupid stuff before you race, like <laughs> eat McDonald's uh, and go all out at the dining hall. You've got to stay in pretty good shape, obviously. So yep. um, then you'd go off and compete, and there's, you know, all the thousands of people there watching and cameras and stuff, which is pretty crazy for me because I've never been part of that before. So yep. um, it's a big experience, but you're there to compete first and foremost. And I was proud because I actually did – four out of five personal bests and made a couple of finals and placed sixth in the 400 freestyle in, in uh, Rio. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, nice. No, so you competed in five events at Rio? Five events. Yeah. Yes. What were they? 50, so the 400? 400. 400 and the 200 IM. They were the mm -hmm. two that I made finals in. I also did the 50 free, the 100 free and the 100 fly. So very uh, sort of much a bit of a, not necessarily an all-rounder, but I sort of did everything. Uh, but now, nowadays, I, I specialise on a couple, um, just being a bit older now, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Just for the people wondering out there, what qualifies you to be a Paralympian? Great question. So um, for me, I've got something called retinitis pigmentosa, which means um, I've got very bad eyesight. Um, tunnel vision probably is a very simple way of describing it. I've got about 10% of my vision um and uh it gets worse as i get older so i might be blind one day um uh, but that um, being legally blind um you know there's a few other challenges i can't drive a car which is a bit hard sometimes but um that um qualifies me to be in the classification that i'm in in my mm -hmm. uh, at the paralympics yeah nice what did it feel like being the first tasmanian in basically two decades to go to the paralympics i didn't know it was two decades so thanks for that oh, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's pretty cool. I know that um, Ariane Tipness obviously um, 
was a swimmer at the 2020 Games. Yeah. Um, and I know there's uh, been some other swimmers throughout the times, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Two decades. Um, yeah, training in Tassie was, you know, I'm proud to be a Tasmanian, obviously. And I, but training in Tassie was tough, especially being from Devonport. Like um, a lot of my mates through school were, you know, into their AFL, um, basketball, um, cricket sort of thing. But swimming was, I was kind of the odd one out uh, in a good way. Um, yeah. But that was hard, like not having kind of someone to chase. I did at a young age, but when I got sort of the latter end of high school, I didn't have someone to chase. So, um, you know, that was hard. Um, so I think that's probably why for a lot of Tasmanian swimmers, like it's not the number one sport down there. Whereas now being in, in, in Queensland um, for swimming, it's good because there's, you know, every second person's an amazing swimmer. Um, but yeah, I always love to say that I'm Tasmanian and um Obviously, something relevant at the moment. What about the Jackies? The Jack Jumpers through to the um, sorry, something just happened on my phone. Then through to the NBL Grand Final. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that as a Tasmanian. Yeah, that's amazing. People weren't even picking them to make finals. Now they're in the, yeah, far out. Good story. Right, it's cool. I'm on the yeah. bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, nice. I think a lot of people are now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like competing at that 2014 Parapen Pax? Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, and you made it was a, cool. you got a few medals there? Yes, got two medals, got a silver and a bronze, mm. um, which was yeah, really, really cool to be able to go away for Australia on the first time. Um, that was the first possible chance I had to make an Australian team as a para swimmer. I competed against able-bodied sort of kids, I suppose, through the, the age group program and uh, being a youngster. But <laughs> being a para, I very quickly made the Australian team and going away representing Australia and America was pretty cool. Yeah. What's the difference between that sort of comp compared to an Olympics? Um, nothing really, I suppose, is probably the real simple answer. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, the um, comparing Olympics to Paralympics, no difference really. You know, you've yeah. got some different sports in there um, mm-hmm. to accommodate for some of the different impairments, you know, like wheelchair rugby, which yep. is uh, also known as murder ball. So you can go and figure that one out. They sort of yep. smash each other just like they I've do seen a rugby. a few of those games. <laughs> They're pretty crazy, aren't they? Yeah. And just, you know, besides that, you know, it's same country, same facilities, same venues. And that's the beauty about the Paralympics. I, uh, I'm i probably a bit biased, but I like watching it more because, um, you know, you've got so many uh, different impairments and disabilities trying to, you know, achieve the same thing as someone, you know, with a, uh, a regular looking body is trying to do uh, from perhaps sometimes, you know, the same background, but completely different you know, ways of getting there. So that's the beauty about the Paralympics. So Pampax, you know, para Pampax compared to normal able-bodied Pampax, the only difference would be you've got your different classifications. So, you know, you've got me racing vision impaired people. You've got my my mate um, who's missing his his leg competing against other people that are missing their legs. So really it's the same as you, uh, the able-bodied side of things. You've got people with able bodies competing against either, each other. I'm competing against people that have uh, poor vision as well. Yeah, nice. What's your favourite things to do outside of swimming now? I'm a massive uh, AFL fan and NBA fan. So um, I work quite a lot, personal trainer and swimming coach and uh, a couple other things I do around the sort of around the, around the traps, but massive sport fan, um, go for the Carlton Blues and I go for the Lakers. So when I do get a moment, which isn't too often, I like to sort of glue myself to that because I get to put my feet up when I do that too. Yeah. Did I read that your cousin is an AFL player? Yes, my cousin Eli Templeton played for the uh, Saints. Now he's playing VFL in Melbourne and um, absolutely killing it down there. So, um, yeah, I, I think that would be the thing that I would like to do too uh, if, if I had the, you know, the, the normal vision probably mm-hmm. is play AFL. My, my dad was um, uh, a really good AFL player. Um, and then, you know, my family, they're all AFL nuts. So, um, yeah, maybe if I didn't get crunched with all those tackles from the side, I'd I like to play footy as well, but swimming's good for me. I get to swim up and down the black line. But, yeah, Eli's uh, an amazing footy player, yeah. Yeah, nice. What was your path to professional swimming? Say that again, sorry, buddy. Sorry, what was your path to professional swimming? Uh, yeah, good one. Um, I started swimming when I was eight because uh, my sister, Beck, she's four years older than me. Um, she just started swimming. I sort of followed along. Um, and then from there, I suppose... I just got a little bit better each year, um, broke a couple of Tasmanian records when I was 11 um, and continued to develop. Um, hit a bit of a roadblock through sort of my teen years though, like 14, 15, 16, 17. Like I really didn't improve. Um, you know, I 
sometimes trained alone while I was in Tassie. So I didn't have sort of perhaps some of the, you know, the guidance that maybe you'd have in some of your top performing squads. But um, like I was still pretty competitive in Tassie, sort of in the able-bodied sort of ranks. Um, decided to become a para swimmer when I was 18 because a family friend sort of suggested you know, in a good way, you know, Jake's got terrible eyesight. Why doesn't he do para swimming? <laughs> so <laughs> I just followed that path. And as a, a para swimmer, I immediately made the team. So although there was some struggles as a able-bodied swimmer, like I'd already put myself in a pretty good place so that when I transitioned to para swimming, I was already there, ready to go. Yeah, nice. What are your goals for the next couple of years? So Commonwealth Games is very soon mm-hmm. um, waiting for um, some... Uh, the team announcement soon. I, I think I'm in a good shape for that, but I think yep. the team announcement is tomorrow. I think it's very soon. Tomorrow. So yep. uh, nice. yeah, I, I hope so. I think so. I've been sort of waiting a little bit, but um, I'm in a good position, I think uh, to go to Commonwealth games. So fingers crossed I get to go there and I'll be racing the 50 freestyle there if I go. So that's pretty cool to, to do a sprint um, at my first Commonwealth games. That would be, and then obviously yeah, okay. we've got um, Paris in 24. So that's coming around quick too. Yeah. Nice. So when were those trials? Uh, So the trials, Commonwealth Games, this was very unique. So not very often you get this for swimming, but usually it's sort of a one chance to make the team um, at at a single competition. But Commonwealth Games, we had a window from January 2021 until April 18 or 17, a couple of weeks ago, 2022. So we had like 16 months to post a time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The criteria sort of stated that you've got to be top three in Australia um in your given event plus you got to be competitive in the commonwealth i think top seven in the commonwealth so i think at this stage i'm ranked number two i think i might be wrong in the commonwealth for that window of time so um yeah everything's looking good i think yep so you should be able to get picked i hope so yeah after yep. last year i, I yeah, really hope i am because uh it's sort of been a lot of hard work in the making yeah definitely who's the worst teammate to room with through your career and why the worst teammate. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a hard one. Um, worst teammate. Oh, to be fair, Grant Patterson, he's uh, probably one of my best mates and great to room with. I'm actually not going to say I don't think I've got a worst roommate. I've always been yeah. lucky to have some great roommates. But I'm going to throw Scooter under the bus because there's a few times that I've roomed with him where he just lets rip and farts all the time. And, uh, you know, my sense of smell isn't too bad. So um yeah that was that's shocking he usually ruins with a guy called Ahmed Kelly who apparently doesn't have a sense of smell so I think those two sometimes go well together <laughs> yep, that's probably fair enough then yep yep <laughs> <laughs> what's the best word to describe you right now to describe me we'll say as an athlete right now I'd say I'd say persistent yep. um through you know in 20 I had a pretty good run in the early stage of my para career but 2019 I missed out on worlds by 0.3 of a second so, you know, the tiniest margin. Um, 2020, we missed the, you know, we missed the opportunity as a whole to go to the Paralympics or the Olympics with COVID. So that was a hard year as well. And then last year, obviously, um, missing out on the team. Although, you know, I got, I did everything they asked me to do, but they didn't take me. That was, you know, there was three years there where I sort of could have quit or given in, but I suppose I stayed patient and hopefully that'll pay off soon. Yeah, nice. And persistent. I said persistent and patient. I said two different words there, but we'll go with persistent. (laughs) Too easy. (laughs) What advice would you give a 14-year-old today? I think this is the same advice I'd give to myself um, if I was 14, uh, because this is something I probably wasn't very good at, is just to work on the technique um, and not, you know, get too caught up in it. You know, when you look back and think, when you're in the moment, I suppose, as a youngster, or at any point in time, you sometimes think, oh, this is the end of the world if I, if I don't do very well in this race or if I don't do very well in this training session. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not looking back at any of those sessions I did or competitions I did when I was 14 saying to myself, you know, that made or, or it broke me. It's not a case like that. So I think just go with the flow, um, work on the skills because the skills that you develop at, at a young age, you know, whether you're a basketballer working on your shooting, um, you know, technique or you know, even a dancer working on those technical skills. A swimmer technique is very important. And the hard, the, the longer you get into your career, the harder it is to change. So I wish I had better skills at a younger age. Yeah, nice. Thanks for coming on the podcast today. No worries, buddy. It was awesome to be there. And thanks for your time too. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast with Jacob. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.